welcome back to the 43rd Ryder Cup here at Whistling Straits. We are with Shane Lowry. Uh, Shane, um, 34 years old. Is there any extra gratification uh, uh, being on this team? Um, you know, in lieu of how hard you worked to get here, especially because perhaps it didn't come earlier in your career uh, in an easier fashion. Yeah, I, I suppose I haven't really thought about it like that. Look, I'm just happy to be here. I think it shows how hard it is to make a Ryder Cup team. And, uh, you know, I've had a pretty decent career so far, and it's kind of all led up to this now. And I'm here this week, and, you know, I'm happy to be here playing for Europe, and i um, so excited to get out there competing and, you know, hopefully winning points at the weekend. Okay, let's hit the floor here. Let's start right behind me, number 20. Uh, hi, Shane. Can you give us a little bit of an insight into what the guys have been getting up to behind the scenes, team room last night, anything like that? Um, not much, to be honest. We've been just chilling. We've got, uh, we've got a great setup back in the hotel. We've got a great team room. Uh, there's a great buzz every evening, um, good atmosphere, and everyone just kind of sitting around, hanging out. Um, yeah, not much, not a whole lot, to be honest. Just sitting around, chatting. We've obviously had a few team meetings, a um, few little things that we've had to do with the captain and the vice captains, but um, I'm obviously not going to say too much about those. And uh, yeah, it's it's just been it's just been great fun. We've obviously only been here a couple of days, um, but I'm you know I'm I'm loving it. Like I'm I'm really enjoying myself and um, trying to soak it in as much as I can. Let's go back left. Uh, Scott's back there, number twenty-five. Hey, Shane, uh, you said uh, after you got picked for the team that this uh, ranks as sort of a crowning uh, achievement for your career and kind of raised some eyebrows considering you want to clear a jug in Ireland. Can you sort of explain why it means so much to you and why this is such a big accomplishment for you? Um, just because I've never done it before. And it's something as a European player, look, you obviously want to win majors and you want to, you know, compete at the highest level. and. Golf, for the most part, is an individual sport. But you know, as a European player, as an Irish player, growing up, you've watched, you know, Ryder Cups. Obviously, uh, you know, Christie Junior, Philip Walt, Naaman Darcy, Rory, G Mac, Paddy, Paul, you know, Darren, all all the great Irish players that have played the game. For me, it was something that I really wanted to do, and I felt like I had to do. Do you know what I mean? If I want to be up there with you know those guys, when it, when you're talking about you know really good or great Irish golfer. So it's uh, it's something that I've, you know, I felt like I let it slip in 2016 and I should have been, I should have made that team. I, I didn't play great towards the end of that campaign. And, uh, you know, when I got my chance this year, I felt like I really wanted to take it. Um, obviously, I needed a pick at the end of the day and I'm very grateful that, that Paddy has put his trust in me. Um, but yeah, it's just something as an Irish player growing up, it's, you know, playing a Ryder Cup is just, it, it's right up there with, with everything. And obviously, you know, now that I'm here, there's only one goal for the rest of the week, and that's to win. And, um, you know, that would obviously be, be the icing on the cake. We're going to go straight back 26. Yeah. Um, do you think that your golfing upbringing kind of equips you well for playing here? Because it seems to be pretty windy and going to stay that way. Um, and if so, what are the kind of skills that, that you have that help you in those conditions? Yeah, I, I do think um, I'm pretty happy with the conditions here, to be honest. I'm pretty happy with the golf course and, and that cold wind. Um, it feels very much like a, a, a summer's day in Ireland when you're out there. You know, it's uh, it, it's quite difficult to play in these conditions because you need to get your head around hitting a six iron 150 yards as opposed to, you know, normally most guys hit their six iron over 200 yards. So it's, uh, it's just little things like I feel, you know, might help me this week or conditions and you know, stuff like that, but, um, yeah, how do, how do you go with coping with it? It's just, sometimes it's hard to practice for that. You just kind of need to know how to do it, and I feel like I know how to do it. So I'm um, very excited to get out there competing and, you know, hopefully winning some points. Going to go over here to number six on your right. Um, <clears throat> Shane, you know, obviously the, when the U.S. plays in this thing, they carry around the U.S. flag. They play for their country. Um, with Europe, it's a bunch of different people from different places. What's sort of the the rallying point that makes that brings you guys together in such a good fashion? Usually, um, I honestly have no idea. Um, but when you enter that team room, there's almost like something just hits you. Like it just feels it just feels so good to be a part of a group like this and a group of great players. You know. Um, 
I was sitting back the other evening with Terrell Hatton and we were just kind of soaking it all in and you look around the room and Sergio Garcia is there and Ian Poulter and Lee Westwood and you know some of the greats of European golf. Obviously the vice captains are there who are the greats of European golf as well. Paddy is our captain who's you know one of the one of the all-time greats of European golf and I, I just think to be a part of a group like that just feels so special and it just feels so special to be to be here competing for Europe and I think we all we all believe so much in ourselves and we all believe so much in each other that you know we're here playing for each other and we're here fighting for every last point and every last put we can get we're fighting not only for ourselves this week but for for each other and I've no idea why that is that way with, with Europe, but you know that's just the way it is, and that's the way it has been for many years. I'm going to go back to number 10 in the back right. That's me, Shane. Uh, all the best this week. Thank you. Good to see the green hat. Yeah. Uh, how cool was it yesterday when you were called out as number 163 of 164 players to play for Europe in the Ryder Cup? A special moment? Yeah, uh, very special. I think it just goes to show um, you know, how, how few people have actually played the Ryder Cup for Europe and how hard it is to do it. Um, and I'm, you know, very proud of myself of what I've achieved to get here. But obviously, I want to be here and I want to, you know, make points and um, whatever. But yeah, it's uh, it is it is pretty cool when you see how few people have done it, and it's just it is very special. It's you know, it was pretty cool on Monday evening when we, you know, watched that video with everyone in the team room, and the team room was pretty full, and he made the rook three rookies stand up and take uh, an applause, and that was pretty cool. And yeah, it's it's just been look the whole week so far. I know we're only two days in has been has been an unbelievable experience, and I'm so excited for what lies ahead. We're going to go same direction, number 12. Hi, Shane. Um, I think I'm right in saying that Podrick has said that every player will have his own uh, special mission this week. I'm just wondering, what's your mission, and have you set yourself your own, your own mission, your own promise to yourself? Um, that's the first I've heard of that. <laughs> my, mission, my mission in my own head is to... Look, I don't care if I don't make any points this week and we win on Sunday. It doesn't bother me. Um, I don't care if I don't play and we win on Sunday. It doesn't bother me. So there's only one thing that matters this week, and that's winning the trophy. And that's, you know, it won't be a successful week unless we're standing there with the Ryder Cup on Sunday evening. So um, I'll do whatever it takes to, to be there on Sunday evening with the Ryder Cup uh, as a part of this team. And, uh, yeah, whether it be playing loads or not playing at all, it, it doesn't bother me. I just have to do what I'm told this week and, and do it well. Straight across four. Shane, as a captain's pick and, and being selected by one of your real good friends, do you feel added pressure to not let him down? No. Um, I don't think there's going to be any... You can't feel any more pressure than there's probably going to be out there on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's, uh, you know, you're playing for your team, you're playing for your continent, you're, we're playing for the European Tour, um, you know, we're playing, playing for a whole lot of things. So, obviously, I'm a captain's pick, but I was... Look, I was very close to making the team. I was first man out. Um, felt like I deserved to pick. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like I deserve to be here. So, if I didn't feel like I deserved to be here, it'd probably be a bit different. But I really feel like I deserve to be here. And uh, you know, I'm like I said, I'm just excited for the week ahead. Doug on 23. Shane, as a, as a first timer, I'm, I'm sure you've kind of had in, in your head kind of some expectations of what the the week would be like. Uh, having been here for a couple of days, has anything? matched whatever expectations or, or thoughts yeah, or visions you had? Did anything surprise you? It's everything I expected and way more. It's, um, it's look, you know, you walk, we come into the hotel and we go downstairs into our team room and it's just the setup in there and just sitting around and being a part of a group like this. It's 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 hard to explain how special it is. It's, it's kind of, you know, I had a good chat with GMAC the other day and you know, he said at certain points you kind of want to stand back this week and really look at what you're doing and soak it all in. And I'm trying to do that as best I can. And it's just, it's just so special to be here. It's it, it really is. And um, you know, anybody that's known me, anyone that's been a, my friends and family back home, my teammates or my team, um, anybody that's been involved in me over the last ten years knows how how much I really wanted to be here. And you know, I'm here now, and it's just yeah, it's it's everything I expect and more. We're going to go to eight over here on your right. Uh, Shane, you were asked earlier about uh, what unifies Team Europe. And I was curious, is America itself maybe some kind of unifying factor that whatever status America enjoys in the world of golf, does that sort of motivate Team Europe as in we want to beat the juggernauts or however you think of that? Is that part of it? I don't know. Um, no, like 
I don't know. Like I said, I I I don't know. Like I I genuinely don't know what brings us together as well as we do. As we, I say, we like uh, just my first one, but like you know, you you watch European Ryder Cup teams over the years, and they do seem to have that something that it takes to compete in this tournament, and um, you just can't teach that, or you can't train that, or you can't buy that. It's just something that has to be has to come from within. Like it's it's something that I think we've had and we have this week, and you know, hopefully we can bring it out and perform our best, and then you know, Sunday evening, hopefully it'll be our week. I wouldn't say there's a special chip on your shoulder in regards to America no. or for the team itself. No, like, look, we know all the American players. We play week in, week out with them on the PGA Tour, and, you know, some of us are friendly with them. You know, it, it's, it's, they're just, they're just a team that, we, that are in our way this week to do what we want to do, and we want to beat them. And that's, you know, that's just the way it is. I don't think there's anything there that makes us want to beat them more than, just want to be standing there with the trophy on Sunday evening. It's nothing about them or nothing about their country. It's it's just they're in our way for what we want to do this week. And yeah, front left 19. Uh, Shane, when when Patrick was winning his majors uh, in 07, 08, what role did that have in inspiring you as a younger player? And can you recount your first uh, encounter with him? Yeah, I think um, I I always say like, look, we've been very fortunate in Ireland over the last since 2007. Um, you know, when it comes to major golf, how how successful we've been. You look at what Paddy did, and then obviously G Mac after him, and and then Rory, Darren, and myself. It's uh, you know we've we've kind of um, we've kind of batted above our weight. You know, it, it punched above our weight. It's uh, it, it's been great, and um, I think Paddy kind of paved the way for the rest of us to kind of maybe believe more in ourselves and believe that we can do it. And um, it's obviously been great. Um, my first encounter with him. Um, I don't really know, to be honest. Obviously, it was probably when I came on tour. Um, but he was over here a lot. I didn't really get to know him until I was a few years out on tour. Obviously, I would have played a few practice rounds with him and stuff whenever I could. But, you know, I got to know him well over the last five or six years, and we've since formed a great friendship. And um, it's just great to be here as a part of his team because he is one of my good friends. And, um, you know, that'll be an extra kind of added, added incentive for myself to, to win for him on Sunday as well. All right, last question, really quick, 24. Hi, Shane. Uh, GMAC obviously advised you to sit back and soak it in a bit, but you're a big personality in your own way, a strong character. Do you find that difficult, or what do you think? What uh, qualities talking, not, do you not bring sit, yourself? So. Not sit back and, and stay out of the way. It's, it's sit back and, you know, kind of soak in what's going on around you and then get to work. Like, it's... it's um, I, I do believe I'll, I'll have you know a big part to play in this team this week, and I I do believe that you know I can bring a lot when it comes, you know when it comes to it on Friday, Saturday, Sunday when you know when push comes to shove in this tournament. But um, yeah, I, I don't think I meant that. I didn't mean like sit back and kind of you know just go about my business the way I normally do or be. I, I just have to be myself. I think I was asked about it you know on the Sunday evening after I got to pick you know what what can I do this week? And I think if I just be myself this week, I think that'll be good enough. So um, I just go out there and be myself and um, hopefully pick up some points. And like I say, hopefully win that trophy on Sunday. Thanks. Shane, thank you for your time today cool. and have a terrific day and week. We are joined by Mr. Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy, welcome to what is your second career Ryder Cup. Um, it's been three years since Paris and uh, your European team is similar but different. Um, is there, is the concept of momentum, can you carry something over like that over three years or, or maybe it goes back further with the, the recent successes of, of Team Europe? Uh, can you have momentum from previous Ryder Cups? Uh, I guess um, if you look at it like that, I, I think, um, yeah, we've got a fantastic record over the, you know, however many years um, in the Ryder Cup, so I think we all, I think we always can draw on that and take from that. Um, I, I think probably what we do is we have a lot of experience in what has gone so well for Team Europe um, at Ryder Cups in the past, and I think we take that with us and, and draw from that. And then um, I'm sure any time a Ryder Cup comes around, it's a, a new challenge um, and a new group of players um so um it's it's its own in individual week but i think what we take is experience and 
um, a lot of good times in recent years and a lot of things that we know have worked. So um, I think that's what we do. Okay, let's go to your back right, number nine. Yeah, I mean, last Ryder Cup, you and Frankie are this wildly successful pair, but he's not here this week. And you recently played with him. I'm just kind of curious if he expressed any thoughts to you about not being here, uh, if it feels somehow a little lonely without him. <laughs> no, definitely, uh, definitely not lonely uh, with the guys in the team that we have. I, um, you know, I feel massively privileged to be here with everybody that's that's part of the team um, and loving every minute. I think Fran, of course, like um, players that either you know anybody that hasn't played a Ryder Cup or the, or when you have been to one, you want to be part of it all the time and you want to be. Um, just adding and contributing something to the team. So he would, of course, love to be here. Um, speak to him all the time. He's a massive supporter of the team, and he will be this week. Um, but for me, you know, it's um, it's another Ryder Cup. It's with a bunch of guys that were in Paris. It's with some new guys, but guys that you see all the time. And I think just being part of Team Europe, um, everybody feels and is made to feel so at home and so part of it. And I love being in the environment that we create when a Ryder Cup comes around. Again, in the back right, number 11. Hi, Tommy. You probably um, hugged more uh, Europeans in Paris than you're going to see all week here. Uh, I just wonder, are you, you're somebody who feeds off energy. Are you going to be able to um, get yourself up and show the same uh, energy without uh, the fans out there? I think we, uh, we create it ourselves and we, and we do it with each other. Um, of course, this is a different... Um, different challenge, different atmosphere for us and something that I've actually never experienced before. So even though it's not my first Ryder Cup, it's my first one in America, um, I'm still excited by the challenge and um, and what the crowds, what a um, away crowd for us uh, brings to it and that advantage that maybe the Americans have. But I think I'm really, really looking forward to going out with my teammates and um you know, go, you know, going and fighting for this Ryder Cup together and um, either, you know, pulling each other up or whatever it is that we need to do um, to do that. But I'm looking forward to going out there with the guys and just creating our own atmosphere. Has there ever been a moment when you've looked back on uh, Paris and thought, how oh, the hell do I follow that? No. Um, it's uh, memories that I will have and that team will have for a lifetime. Um, and... Hopefully we'll do the same um, in this one, but uh, you know whatever happens in each individual event, whether it be a Ryder Cup or major or regular tournament, life goes on, and there's always the next challenge around the corner, and that's just that's just what this is. So um, let's just create our own memories this week and um, keep them in the locker forever as well. Front right, Juan Guillen. So really, I mean, how much do you miss Francesco this week? And then uh, if there was a substitute for Bollywood this week, no, like a different version. Would it be like Fitzpatrick Wood, Wisberger Wood? I mean, it's not the same singing, but... Uh. Um, I think Molly Wood was a great name. I think we had that one given to us. But, you know, I... Um, it's... Listen, like, Molly Wood was um, in Paris, and I think we're obviously very, very close. I think um, people may be overly focused on it. Uh, it's, it's not around this week, but also... Um, we have an unbelievable team and I can't wait to partner up with whoever whoever that's going to be. And whatever the captain um, wants uh, me to do, what sort of matches he wants me to play, you know, who he'd like me to play with, who we fit well with, um, it's the same for all the guys. I had an incredibly lucky experience that in my first Ryder Cup as a rookie, I had someone like Francesco that was by my side and he was obviously playing great and I was playing well. But, um, you know, none of that... Um, really matters at all this week it's uh um completely different and um you know i you know i'm just excited to play with whoever my my partner is as is the rest of the team rex number three tommy everyone talks about how extreme the first tee experience is especially for a rookie and paris seems to be the extreme example of that how would you describe your experience three years ago when you walked over for your first match uh i'd i had a really good experience of it because I, I think you know, the first tee of the Ryder Cup you do hear from a lot of people you hear um, unbelievable stories about how nervous you are can't put the ball in the tee you're seeing three balls like you just want to make contact and um, you, you know being on that first tee for me going into Paris 
Um, for 18 months, my goal for the Ryder Cup was standing on that first tee on Friday morning and, and I'd pictured it so much. I'd pictured what the crowd would be like. I could hear the roars. I could see the first fair because it was a golf course that we were so familiar with. So I had such a clear image of what my goal was that year. Sort of when I walked onto the first tee, kind of, I'd kind of achieved that goal and I had like a... It was by far a calming sensation, but it wasn't um, like the horror story of not being able to put the ball in the tee or anything like that. I was playing with this blue Nike 500, which, like, you know, it was my favourite club of all time that eventually bent. But um, like, I, I, had, I had a lot of things going for me on the first tee, and I had a particularly nice experience. I managed to like pull draw one that just about stayed in the fairway. But um, like that was, you know, a good experience for me. And yeah, I think um, you know players that have played in a Ryder Cup can all. Um, you know, say the same thing about first tee is an incredible place to be in golf. It's something that we don't experience ever, um, except for once every two years. Um, but at the same time, we all strive and dream to be there and experience whatever that is, whether it is, you know, you can't put the ball in tee, whether it is you feel like you're going to miss the ball, whatever it is, you know, you've dreamt of this your whole life. So, you know, thrive on it and enjoy it. Back right, number seven. Hi, Tommy. Um, I'm curious. Do you think the essence of a good pairing is one where your games mesh together or one where your personalities mesh together? I think, what is the 24 players there? And I think the 24 are the best players in the world. Um, games obviously do play a part. I think personality is probably, if I was to favour one that's more important than the other, I, I would probably go with that one just for the sheer level of golf that we all play. Um, Week in, week out, um, and obviously foursomes is a different, you know, thing altogether. You've got golf balls and 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 whatnot, and how people play. But um, you know, I it a lot of it goes down to if if you play well, then like you're a good team, and um, that's you know that's all you, that's all you can really do. But um, I think again, Europe is so lucky with the personalities that we have and um, how well we gel together together and everything. We've we've always come out of it really really good. Going over here on your left, Andrew, 21. Hi, Tommy. Um, I was going to ask you something different, but now you mention it. What have you done with the blue Nike 5 would have bent that you first Ryder Cup shot with? It's in the garage somewhere. <laughs> it, it? it deserted me at Bay Hill one year where it just sort of bent. So. Did you bend it? No, I, did, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't bend it. It was just out of use, out of overuse, unfortunately. 24, right back here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're hearing a lot about how They've set the course up to suit the kind of bombing game of DeChambeau. Um, just wondered if you agree with that, whether, how, if you could describe that for our layman readers, what that means on the course, and if so, what you need to do to kind of combat it. Um, well, I, I think um, for the majority of time, and as a simple rule of life, if you're going to hit it 350 and straight, it's going to suit your most courses. So, like, you know, setting a course up like that is is always going to you know Bryson it's got an advantage for how far he hits it and for how relatively straight he hits it I, I sort of got a sense when I was playing it yesterday I didn't really think it made that much difference um, you know that's the sort of obviously first morning and I, I couldn't really see there was a few holes where you know probably didn't feel like it was that much of an advantage I think at the end of the day you still got to play um, and you know like setting it up like when you ask a question and say, you know, set it up for Bryson, they have 11 other players as well. Um, so, you know, all of those have still got to play the same golf course, the same as us. Um, and, I, you know, I, I, I'm not really sure. I think on any given day, like everybody has to play and you have to play well. I think um, the wind is going to have a massive effect. Um, we played it yesterday in one wind. Apparently it's a different win on Friday. Um, so we'll see. It's hard to judge from nine holes of golf yesterday on the first day when you're sort of getting into it and getting everything ready and, and all of that. But we'll get a, we'll get a closer look today and um, see how that goes. But um, no matter how the course is set up for whoever, um, you still have to go out and play golf. And, um, and, and, you know, that's just what we'll all keep in mind. Doug Ferguson, 23. Tommy, it seems like for, you know, we have four days of practice and pictures and team rooms and, and, and then Friday morning hits and it goes so quick, warp speed almost. Yeah. What are your recollections of that in your, in your first Ryder Cup? And is it something you can even try to explain to, to the three first-timers you have? 
Yeah, the week goes quick, and um, for sure, that there, there is there is so much more to do than anything we do on a on a on a regular basis. Um, it is it's an incredible week. Um, I think it's it's definitely you know it's it's difficult to you have to be mindful of it's difficult to find a rhythm a lot of the time with with the amount that's going on and and what you have to do and um, and it, and if if you if you kind of have that in mind and know that not be too hard on yourself out on the golf course on practice days get your stuff done and and work into friday because friday saturday sunday is um what matters in the week and i think yeah as soon as the week starts it, it goes very very quickly um and you know the pressure in the atmosphere lasts from the first tee all the way to, to the last on sunday which is unlike you know anything else that we get as well so um we have amazing rookies in our team as the USA um, and I think uh, for our rookies you know we're not lacking in experience or winning tournaments or handling big moments so yeah the Ryder Cup's different but um, you know I think the guys definitely seem very comfortable in the team room they seem good at the golf course and everything I think they're going to be great. Did you did you find it hard to to go to sleep at night because the the buzz the adrenaline was so great or were you so exhausted you're out quick. Even each other out, I think. Um, I'm always like the first one to bed anyway, I think, so I'll, I've, I'm always fine with that. Right back here, number 20. Uh, hi, Tommy. For, for a long time in this event, um, Tiger Woods would have been the scalp that every European would have wanted. He's, he's not here, obviously, this time. Who would be the American you'd most like to defeat this week? Um, I don't really care. <laughs> um, you know, uh, just... Whoever, if I don't beat anybody in the team wins, then great. Um, if I beat everybody in the team wins, then great. Um, all we want to concentrate on is getting the points for Europe and then um, celebrating and, and moving on and having that. So, um, you know, we just we just want to go out and play. And whoever your opponents are, they're going to be 12 of the best players in the world. And you're just going to go out and have to play your game and, and hopefully get the points that we need. Last question, very quick, 10. Morning, Tommy. Um, you're hugely popular wherever you go and probably one of the most popular European players with American fans. <laughs> Have you ever experienced being heckled or the crowd rooting against you? Not very often. Um, uh, no, I, I, I think this is a very, very um, different experience. And yeah, like I say, this is my first Ryder Cup in America and I have... Um, not, you know, I don't have the experience of, of previous Ryder Cups where, and you know, the the away fans, they're all just part of the Ryder Cup. That's that's what it is. That's what makes the event so special. Special. That's what makes it great. Um, I've of course spoke to the guys, the experienced guys that have played a few, and um, you have to thrive off that atmosphere and 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 play your game and and enjoy it in a way. And that's um, I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like. I'm looking forward to getting stuck in and um yeah whatever happens it's all just part of the Ryder cup and um you know happy to be here and happy to be competing for team europe i thought you might say sunday in port rush but i'm glad you didn't <laughs> uh, i don't remember that day all right tommy thank you for the time have a great day and a great stay thank you we are joined by burnt wiesberger burnt welcome to your first career the first uh, Ryder Cup of your career. Um, curious when it became apparent, and uh, I, I guess I'm not familiar with the European notification system, but when you were assured of being on the team, who was the person that you reached out to that you were most excited to to share that news with? And, um, um, you know, just who was that person you wanted to, you know, connect with uh, emotionally about making this team? Yeah, in my case, it was um, uh, probably the given that the free, free captain speaks obviously came after me, but I was probably the last to qualify for European teams or deep into Sunday afternoon at, uh, at the PGA Championship at Wentworth. So it was quite nerve-wracking, but i um, very glad I'm here right now. Um, you know, given that I'm um, um, playing my first Ryder Cup, uh, it's been uh, obviously a, a big goal of mine to be part of a European team. And um, as you can imagine, we've got all... all uh, a lot of people who have worked with us um, or supported us uh, from for different stages of our career. Um, but obviously, it's uh, it's very personal and very emotional when you get uh, 
uh, get to qualify for those teams. So family um, was was the immediate uh, call up um, once I got the thumbs up after after the Sunday round at Wentworth to to be part of the team. Okay, let's hit the floor for some questions, and we'll begin with Doug, number twenty three, behind me. Burn one of the um, on, on the picks uh, that, that Patrick did, Poulter went out of his way to this, mention you as one of his best friends. I'm just curious how that relationship uh, came to be and what you think of him. With, with Ian? With Ian, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole European team knows uh, each other very well. We've played a lot of golf uh, with, with all of the all the guys. I've played uh, a lot of golf with Ian. I've played um, um, for Europe together with Ian uh, on, on the Eurasia Cup a couple of years back. So, um, I think everyone within this team room has a has a long-standing connection with each other, um, and you know everybody gets along really well uh, with each other on the on the team room, and uh, it's a very relaxed atmosphere. And I feel like uh, uh, Ian and myself are very similar in character, and we have uh, good banter and, and good fun uh, on and off the golf course. So uh, yeah, um, it's uh, I mean you can imagine it's always quite entertaining when you stand on the golf course with Ian, regardless if it's the Ryder Cup week or or any other. How are you guys similar? Do your do your eyes ever get really like bug out when you make a putt? Or um, I, sh I sure hope you see a lot of uh, eyes popping this week from from all the European members. But uh, uh, his intensity is unique, um, especially during this week. Um, I hope we're going to see lots of it as well this week, and uh, I'm sure trying going to try my best as well to 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 channel my inner Ian Poulter and, and get some of that going this week as well. Front right, Juan Guillen. So Brad, I think it's been an emotional like two and a half or three years until here. You were in and out, then in and out. How do you leave that? I mean, did it put pressure on your game or was it better for your game? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, last time, last the last Ryder Cup in Paris, I was part of a, a German speaking TV and tried to give my uh, my senses to uh, what's gonna be the outcome. So I was on this side of the of the press conference and, and trying to, um, you know, uh, you know, make sense of what's going to happen that week. Um, and with along this week, you know, something kind of fueled inside me and, and, and I, I drove it and took it as motivation to be. Um, once my, my injury was, was healed that I uh, had in 2018 to be part of one of these teams, you know, I, I never really vocalized it or, or, or spoke about it too much, but it was definitely a massive motivation for me to be um, the first experience of the Ryder Cup firsthand. It was my, my first one I've been to, uh, but even more so having the, uh, given myself the chance to be part of, of that of a European team. Um, and that those days in Paris definitely started that um, and you know everything that was along uh, on that journey were, were steps in the ladder and uh, I've had um, some really good success since and um, I'm very proud to have played my my way on a European team in that way. In, in another one it's, I know this is a team and this is you represent Europe but I mean representing your country I mean do you, are you getting that response already from from your countrymen what kind of messages or, or feedback are you getting? No, everybody's super excited in Austria. You know, um, we've we've had we had we have some some great talent in in Austrian golf. Um, I think it was a little overdue for having an, an Austrian um, representing Europe in the Ryder Cup. I'm very proud that it's that it's me. I'm I'm um, um, absolutely certain that I won't be the last Austrian who represents uh, Europe at the Ryder Cup. But you know, um, as you can imagine, everybody's uh, is really. Um, Really excited and looking forward to the week, and as am I, uh, to to um, you know get going on Friday and and put the Austrian flag on um, you know on the European Ryder Cup team banner uh, just as much as as Victor is uh, for for Norway, and uh, you know maybe even write a little bit of piece of, of golfing history for Austria. So um, uh, everybody's really really excited, get a lot of messages, and and hopefully, uh, well I'm sure, but uh, there will be. Tremendous support uh, from home as well during the whole week. Burn over here, uh, number 19, Jeff. Burn, I guess you received number 164 of the 164. Uh, when you saw that, what resonated with you in that? And what, what does that mean exactly? Uh, I think I think it's a brilliant idea what what the guys have done. Um, I'm very very proud to 
to have that number for life. You know, everybody's is buzzing, and, and uh, um, you know the, the individual uh, aspect of the game that we have. But this week we all come together as, as 12. Yet everybody has has their their number, and, and nobody can ever take it from them. The, um, I was very very um, surprised that it's been this few. Actually, I, I could have not told you if you would have asked me how many players would have uh, represented the European team uh, in the history of the Ryder Cup. So um, I'm more forever going to be 164, and, and it's, it's going to be amazing. Um, and uh, the guys really loved it, and it, it brings a great theme, I think, to the whole week for us. Back right, number seven. Hello, Bernd. Uh, Hello. <laughs> with all the emotions going on and uh, uh, media and everything else, how much does this affect your personal routine? you usually do before a tournament? Um, you know, I think we all came here knowing that it's, uh, it's a, a different, different type of week. Um, as individuals, I think we normally have our own kind of schedule and, and preparation time that we have for, you know, for, the, for the events. And, uh, but this week is totally different. Um, we're, we're all uh, have a little bit of an agenda, everyone, and, and the schedule. But, uh, you know, we were or I was in my case, because I'm a rookie, I've not experienced it before. Uh, I was, um, um, I got, got a lot of input from former captains and, 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 and the senior players who've been here many times and, and uh, you know, kind of um, manage expectations and manage my schedule and manage our schedule so everybody uh, is, uh, is rested up and, and um, well prepared for when, you know, the uh, when push comes to shove on Friday. We're going to go to number six. What, what do you think from you were an outsider, now you're an insider, brings all these guys kind of from different countries really together to be such a, an effective team at the Ryder Cup over the years? I mean, it's tough to put it down on, on, on one, um, one thing. Uh, uh, I kind of always stood where you were and thought, what is it that you know, makes this European team in a way, always getting from the, the underdog position to a victorious team, especially over the last couple of years at the Ryder Cups. And, um, you know, being part of, of, of the team room, being part of the, the bigger picture of what is um, Team Europe um, this week, but I suppose over the last couple of years, it, it really bonds us really well together. Um, obviously, all the guys are unbelievable golfers, um, but the way... Everybody comes together. Everybody loosens up for the week, has has fun, uh, enjoys their time, uh, goes out there, does the, do their, do their work, and and get prepared as good as we can. But then just you know detach and and, and have the best time possible um, uh, is is um, is really great to be a part of and, and experience that. And uh, uh, I'm sure that also just just feeds into the the performance or or uh, the. Um, uh, you know, the, the victorious uh, side of, of things for, for a European team. Straight across the way, Adam, four. Two, four, I'll go one at a time. What was the best tip you got from one of the past captains or veteran players? Um, that was very, very uh, unique, was to, to absolutely enjoy the week. Uh, to, uh, um, there's going to be a lot of distractions, you know, as I said, as a, uh, stuff that's going on around it, but just just go out there, enjoy, have fun, and um, uh, you know that's that's what I'm what I'm, I'm trying to do here as well this week, and and soak it all in, and um, you know uh, just just let it all out there on the golf course. Okay, and you've played tournaments over here in the U.S. But I think of the twelve, you're probably the one who's played the least, and hasn't had a PGA Tour card per yeah. se. Is that something you plan to pursue at some point? You know what happens happens. I've I've played enough golf over here in the in the states major tournaments uh wgc's and and the odd um, regular pga tour event i'm aware that uh, i'm probably the, the only guy who would call himself purely european based from from uh from playing standpoint um but again i think i've always enjoyed the the challenge of playing globally and 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 getting the chance to play over here in the states and um yeah so uh you know, whatever happens, happens in the future. I'll, um, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. But um, 
as for now, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying my time on the European Tour and, and competing out on the European Tour, and, uh, um, but also uh, cherish, the, cherish the events that are up, happening for me up here in, in the States. We're going to wrap it up. Last question, 21, Andrew. Hi, man. Um, I, particularly in Paris, the way it's developed, you, with like, the stands down the first and the second as it was, it's almost like a football stadium atmosphere, you know, and football stadium singing, chanting. Is that something that you think you'll relish? Is that something you'll have an idea of how other sportsmen feel in team events? Uh, yeah, we, we never get stuff like this happening, obviously. Um, um, I mean, there's... there's People who love that player, this player, that player, and um, but never you have like you either blue or red, uh, and I think you know, that's what makes the Ryder Cup the Ryder Cup. Um, uh, first one that I experienced was Paris, and uh, I did it non-playing wise. Uh, but you know, um, if, if still if you if you golf and you get on that tee, regardless if you're playing that day, that the, the experience there for the guys must have been unbelievable, um, and uh, it, it will be the same this week but uh, especially Paris for like uh, it really became a, a big big um, amphitheater we have it this week again and, and really uh, um, you know bring the maximum out of the crowds um, for, for both teams so um, really really looking forward to, to step in on a, on a packed first tee there Bern, thanks for finding us today have thank a great guys. day and enjoy your stay here in Wisconsin Absolutely. thank you guys we are with the European captain, Patrick Harrington. Uh, Patrick, the wind is up today. I think everybody's seeing and feeling that. Um, how much different is this golf course with a little bit of wind, let alone a lot, uh, compared to a pretty docile day? I mean, maybe describe that and what the people experience out there. Yeah, obviously the course is designed to play like a Lynx, and you need a bit of wind for that. So if there's no wind, it's... You know, it's stadium golf, hit from A to B and, and move on. Whereas if, it's, if, if it is windy like it is today, and yesterday, there was a nice bit of wind yesterday. Uh, the difference today with it being cold and windy, it really does uh, affect the golf ball when the temperature drops. So it's, it's, it's playing like a true Lynx. You've got to hit wind shots. You've got to keep the ball down at times. You've got to <clears throat> aim off, you know, off into trouble and trust that the wind is going to take it back. There's lots, lots of little issues like that when it gets windy. And it's... You know, nobody wants it too windy. I certainly don't want it too windy this week. It's not, uh, you know, that's not conducive to a, a good, fair battle. But a bit of wind is, is, is a true test of golf. Lovely. Okay, let's start over here, number six, and then we'll go to Phil. Yeah, hi, Potter. We've heard to say that your team's mounting a bit of a charm offensive out there with the, the cheese heads, the, the colours and everything. And how much do you think it's working? Look, the, the crowds are great. Uh, you know, everybody's... Everybody embraced that, as you would have seen on the first tee. That was, uh, you know, when we were doing the clothing with Laura Piano, you know, they were talking about maybe bringing some Irish colours in for me. Uh, I'm not really into that sort of stuff, so I, I came up with, why don't we do something with, with Wisconsin? And uh, obviously the Green Bay Packers kind of fit both the Irish and the, the Green, Green Bay Packers. And then the cheese heads came in and a bit of, you know, a bit of fun with it. And yeah, look... It's lighthearted. You want it that way in, in practice. It's uh, it's somewhat respectful of obviously of Green Bay Packers, and they they were very much on board with this. So a uh, bit of fun, and we got a nice reception with it. And uh, that's kind of what you want on the, the practice days. And obviously business starts on Friday, but at the moment uh, the players are enjoying it and having a having a good time of it. Just so you know, just really remind me of 2004 on that front first day. Bernard Langer had you guys doing something similar, just the way you engaged. With the crowd, is that is it all related? Is that you learned from that even back then? Yeah. Well, look, I think uh, Steve alluded to it in, in his press conference with me the first day that they're going to try and give the crowd something exciting and 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 kind of kind of go back to sort of Valhalla style t type thing. So yeah, look, er everybody's out here to have uh, to get on well with the crowds. There's no doubt about that. We we we. We obviously can't sign autographs this week with COVID, which is something that traditionally we would do. Uh, so, yeah, we, you know, these fans have come out, and they've come out on a cold day. They've come out to watch us, and we, we want to give them something to watch. Phil, back uh, right, number uh, seven. Uh, Neil's asked pretty much the right <laughs> the questions I was going to ask, but I was just wondering, when you were made Ryder Cup captain a few years ago, did you think you'd be stood here talking about throwing foam bits of cheese 
into the crowd? Or do you uh, think I, suff are? I suppose not. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. And, and that's, you know, it is a nod to, to Wisconsin and, and obviously to Green Bay that we, we've gone and done this, we've gone with the colours. And obviously the cheese heads and throwing the things up there is a bit of fun for the, the fans that are here. But, you know, we want to... The Wisconsin fans are very appreciative, so we want to, you know, show our, our our appreciation back. And uh, you know, it's nice. We think the colours turned out nice. We think the outfit looks really good, and uh, I think the players are pretty stoked out there that they're that they're doing something to uh, show their respect for the, the the local state we're in. All right, we're going to go to Jeff over here on my right, number nineteen. Uh, Patrick Shane, uh, Shane was in here earlier today. Uh, in talking about the friendship you two have developed the last five or six years or so, um, what, what's the sense of pride for you to watch him earn his spot on this team, and and what does he bring to this team? He, he, he brings an awful lot into the team room. Uh, all three rookies do. Uh, he's got a great personality in there and, and, and really mixes well and helps the others. Golfing-wise, he's a big-time player. He delivers on a big stage, uh, you know, He's good under that sort of pressure and that he has that belief. Uh, so, yeah, he's ideally suited for uh, this sort of format, match play, uh, golf course, but really up for the occasion. And he's definitely, uh, he's embracing it for sure. Uh, very, very happy with the way he's going about things. And uh, as I said, he's the type of guy who delivers on the big stage. So looking forward to that this week. Okay, we're going straight back to Alex, 23. Padraig, just to understand the Green Bay thing just a little better, when did you make that decision? It must have been a long time ago. Yeah, it, it's it's 18 months ago, at least, uh, maybe two years ago at this stage. That you know, when you're going through the the clothing with Laura Piano, you're looking at the different colours, and uh, you know, as I said, the first, the obvious one. Oh, do you want to wear some green for Ireland? And I, I. I you know, I'm thinking, well, look, you know, this is a European team. Let's let's do something different. And then I said, well, why not recognize Wisconsin where we're going to play? Uh, and, you know, it fit it in very nicely then to go with the Green Bay Packers. So, yeah, it was it was just a, a, a really nice idea. And obviously it grew a little bit when it came to the cheese heads and the foam and, and the hats. And as I said, they were very good, uh, Green Bay Packers, that they, we, you know, we've been in contact there. They bought into it too, and uh, they, they supplied uh, the hats and that, so it was, it was, you know, it worked very well on all sides. Let's go across way to Derek, number five. Hi, hi, and, and now I'm a fan for life. <laughs> and considering, I'm going to say this, like, I'm a Patriots fan. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, so good. now I'm a Green Bay Packers fan. So I changed allegiance somewhat. <laughs> the conversion. Um, Derek. I just wonder on a, a long and demanding course like this one, do you have to be careful in how much you ask of the veteran players in your team. I mean, is, is it really absolutely? Yeah. yeah, you know, we all know in Ryder Cups there's a, a fine line between playing too much, uh, trying to stay fresh. Uh, fine line, 36 holes a day. Obviously, I have a, a slightly older team, uh, experienced team, pretty fit team. You know, that's the one thing about it. You know, we, we we're not struggling in that sense. Some of the older guys, uh, you know, like you could put a uh, Sergio or Paul Casey there fairly fit and strong. You don't see them having any issues with playing 36 holes if they, if they have to. But, yeah, it's something I would be aware of that you don't want to uh, burn players out before the weekend, before the Sunday. Front right, our friend Juan Guillen. Go ahead, Juan. So the American players are coming through and kind of talking more openly about their parents or what the players they play well with. So we had Cantlip talking about Trofele. We had uh, Justin Thomas talking about speed. And then we know that there's probably no chance that uh, Deschambeau and Kepka are going to play together. So does it give you an advantage to kind of have this information and, and how you're going to work with that? Huh? So. Mainly I'm focused on my team. Uh, somewhat when it comes to positioning the players, not, you know, yeah, I would have a, a, a look at who we think we're going to come up against. Uh, what positions and and try and uh, mix and match depending on what we what we like. So yeah, yeah, uh, not at this stage, but definitely when it actually comes to one, two, three, and four matches, yeah, we would look to see well who do we think we're coming up against, uh, and and who wants who wants what. So yeah, look, it's, it's a little part of it. It's not. It certainly wouldn't be. You know, you, 
there's no point in focusing too much on the other team. You have no idea, just like you said with, with, with Brooks and Bryce, and you know, people have asked about that so much, and I, I keep going, well, we, don't, we just don't know. They could be the best of pals this week and, and could be a great partnership thrown out there. And So I'm not focused on anything really about what they're doing until I'm kind of looking at my order of, of, of positioning of my partnerships, and then maybe it might go, well, uh, you know, who wants to play against who? Captain, we're going to uh, beam out to Adam Shupak. Adam, go ahead. You're with Captain Harrington. Hi, uh, Derek. In 2018, Thomas Bjorn gave his team a little bit of added incentive, promising them that he would get a tattoo at a certain place on his body if the team were to win. I'm wondering if you have made some similar type promise to them for this year's team. I am delighted that that's all they asked for because I'd have given up a lot more. So, yes, I will be getting a tattoo. If my team produce a winning week, I will be getting a tattoo to mark the occasion. And very comfortable that's, that they only asked that much of me because I would have given more. Did they actually ask you to do that? I think it's an unwritten rule, so it has come up, yes, in conversation. Maybe they didn't ask. Maybe I offered and they felt that was, that was enough. But definitely uh, it's... Uh, it's it's a given now in Europe. Uh, captain has to get a tattoo. Do we have a target? And I don't have any other tattoos at this stage, so it would be a, a new exper experience for me. Where on the body? Yeah. I know. <laughs> it depends. No, I can't go that way. <laughs> we keep. <laughs> depends how long it is. All right, I'm going to get you off the hook. We're going to go to Eamon here at number four. Padraig Poulter said earlier that he relishes this kind of chest-thumping atmosphere and would never apologize to any opponents over the years that have been irritated by him. Is it useful as a captain to have one guy who's not afraid of being a lightning rod to let other guys on the team kind of fly under the radar if he draws all the public criticism or well, I, I think very much in what you, what you said there, in, in many senses, it's useful to have somebody who takes the attention and somebody takes, uh, takes away from others. It's useful for somebody to help build up other players, to get them into it. So there's a lot of, of emotional swings and roundabouts in this, and you have to be very wary of it because, you know, as Rory spoke earlier, it's easy to, to get involved and then burn yourself out for the weekend. Uh, again, the players play for the glory in this match. They, they come here because they get an experience that they get nowhere else. So they want to have uh, the excitement. Uh, you only have to look at the celebrations uh, of the individual players when, they, when they've won matches. They're nothing like what they celebrate when they win tournaments. Like the, the, the character does change of a player this week. So yeah, emotionally you have to watch that and good and bad, uh, there's no doubt players can, can tire themselves out doing that. Uh, so yeah, and Poulter is, is he is who he is, and we wouldn't ask him to be anybody different. It, it, it is, it's fun to him. You know, it's, it, there's nothing in it to him that's in any way. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a deliberate thing. It's a bit of a, it's, it's a bit of fun to him. It's, it's a bit of his personality, uh, and he just likes having a. Uh, he is maybe a little bit of marmite, but he's pretty much a crowd favourite because of because of his personality. Useful to other guys on the team to just sit back and let Ian yeah, oh yeah, yeah, no, no. attention for the week so they can get a go about their business? Absolutely. You have players that you, you, who are, you want to just focus on playing golf. They're just golfers. That's what they're, you know, they want to concentrate. They want to know what they're doing just like a regular week. And you have other players that want a bit more of a hyped up week. And, and Ian is, is one who, will, who can take that pressure and can deal with it. Not, not everybody wants that, as you, as you said, and he can take it handle it and uh, can be a lightning rod to inspire the team and also as you said maybe to to give other guys a, a quiet or an easy run we have time for a couple more we're going to go back right number nine ewan Patrick, there's been so much chat understandably about the kind of partisan crowd this week and 90 whatever percent is going to be american crowd at what point does that become pressure to the americans whereby there's so much expectancy on them you know delivering here it is, it is an interesting one. Uh, there's no doubt uh, most of the focus for us coming in is the fact that, you know, it, it is going to be 90, 10%, 80, 20%. And as I've said all along, Europe would rather play in front of 40,000 Americans than zero fans. Uh, but it has, maybe when we got here, it has changed a little bit. You can see that there's expectation and pressure, uh, you know, from the fans going, going the other way. They, you know, they have a new strategy. 
so yeah, they, there's there's no doubt home captain has to deal deal with pressure and stress, but it's not like we don't have to deal with it too. So uh, yeah, a little bit added, no doubt about it. And it was, I suppose uh, I suppose we just have to wait and see. All right, we'll wrap her up on number ten. Uh, go ahead. Podrick, it's cool enough out there and quite blustery. And uh, Shane said earlier, Shane Lowry said earlier, it's like an Irish summer's day. That certainly won't hurt from uh, a European team perspective it's li if it's like that over the coming days. Yeah, this would be a beach day at home. Uh, yeah, look, my players don't need that. They're good enough. Uh, they're great ball strikers. So we're not looking for, for extreme windy conditions, difficult conditions, tricky conditions. We don't mind a good solid test. Uh, we don't mind, like, you know, we're all happy that the temperature is to go up on Friday. It doesn't, you know, we don't have a problem with that. We, 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 we're relying on ourselves, uh, not relying on, on outside agencies and the conditions. But, yeah, maybe there is a little bit of an advantage in it for us if, if it does go that way. But as I've always said, we really have probably our best team ever of ball strikers. So, uh, you know, we don't, we're not relying... Just like we're not going to be hiding any players or anything like that, we are not relying on on uh, on conditions to to give us the edge. Bonus question twenty. Uh, sorry, Patrick. Someone just texted me that's in the media center. Do you have any key holes out here this week that you can think of? All eighteen, all eighteen. You got to start at the first. You got to be ready to go. Uh, you know, you can't you can't just pick out one hole and say. You know, clearly 17 is 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 a really tough hole, iconic hole, maybe, and and 18 as well. If your matches go there, yeah, they're going to be the key holes. 18 is the key hole if you get to it, but you know you've got to play 17 holes before that. So, uh, yeah, just every hole is, is is in itself is important, and uh, you know you don't want to be. I can't see why you would choose any particular hole making a big difference to the match. There isn't a, there isn't exactly a. It's, you know, if this was stroke play or something like that, you might have a risk reward hole that you could play safe, uh, depending on how you're going. And if you had to, you could chase and go for it. But this is match play. You've got to play it on the conditions of the day, how your match is going at that moment. So, yeah, I, I, I can't say a particular key hole, even though there would be if it was, uh, you know, if it was stroke play, every, you know, you, you're not getting through this tournament until you finish that last hole for sure. But uh, in match play... You just got to play each hole as it comes. Captain, thanks for your time today. I got to give Brian Kyo a question there. He's travelled a long way, and I keep <laughs> seeing him put his hand up. Come on, Brian. Uh, thanks, Patrick. Uh, just you've obviously made a big effort to get to know your players as well as possible, and you know many of them very well. I'm just wondering, has anybody exceeded your expectations so far this week and surprised you with what they've brought to the party? Uh, Victor, and it's hard to believe he could exceed it, but he he's been. He's been brilliant. Uh, Bernd, very relaxed. And obviously Shane is right on expectation. They're the rookies that are in the team. The other guys, I knew what to expect. Uh, they've been great. Uh, probably as captain, probably Sergio a little bit more has exceeded my expectation. I kind of knew this, but really he works really hard behind the scenes. I wouldn't say there isn't a player in that room that hasn't had a quiet word with, with Sergio hasn't had a quiet word with. So he's continually working, working that. So, uh, yeah, probably if ultimately they're all doing the, 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 everybody's doing their job and nobody is, is in any shape or form below, but definitely, uh, Sergio has, has really, I suppose, done what he should do, what he's expected to do, but definitely delivering in the team room. Victor Dunn. He's just great fun to be around. He really is really good embracing it. He's at the centre of a lot of the of the banter and fun and just yeah, he's he's excellent, I've gotta say. Uh, he's kinda of, we kinda of knew that a bit about Victor, but like Tyrrell was that guy the last time in two thousand eighteen. He he came in and you 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 kind of see the personality on the golf course, but his personality in the locker room is completely different. Uh, and I won't say that about, about Victor, but he's certainly living up to it and he's 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 certainly the center of a lot of the of the fun in the in the locker room. Thanks. Yeah.